Highly beloved of the Lord, welcome to Prayer Watch Tent. I'm very grateful for allowing me to come into your world for such a wonderful fellowship. Without wasting any further time, let's pray. Father, we avail ourselves to you. We present our soul, spirit, and body as a living sacrifice unto you. Lord, receive it and invest your word of comfort, your word of liberty in it. In Jesus' name we pray, thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Beloved, we are very, very thankful to the Lord for such a time like this. Today, I want us to consider when waiting. We know the prophet Isaiah declared in Isaiah 40, verse 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Therefore, Isaiah 40 begins with comforting the people of God, bringing them back to their remembrance of the promises of God. Because in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1, the Bible says, Comfort, comfort my people. Say yes, your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her heart service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord and double for all her sins. And so people waiting for God to do something in their situation is very, very key. People waiting for God to do what? Waiting for healing, confirmation, restoration, encouragement. For God to turn a dark cloud inside out and let the light of Jesus Christ shine bright. You see, beloved, I know you are sitting under the sound of my voice, but at the same time, it's like into waiting on God. That's why as I said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with what? Wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. This to me is a soldier that gets his strength from on high and does things outside of his own realm of talent, power, and wisdom. We are in spiritual battles and we are just trying to live life. And at times they both are overwhelming us and we just need a shot of adrenaline to help us through. Sometimes it is the Lord himself who does it. And sometimes by choice, he will use other people that come into our path. And that is why the encouraging note or this encouraging us is very, very important. We know that in every situation, there is a time to wait and there is a time of moving forward. The wisdom, beloved, needed is what to do and when to do it. It is at those times that we need the wisdom of God to help and the friendship of others to help us stay on track. Isaiah the prophet in Isaiah chapter six saw the Lord for who he is. The Bible says that in Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 6, in the year that Queen Uziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted. He says, seated on his throne, he described how the train of his robe filled temple. And then above him was seraphim, each with six wings, with two wings. They covered their faces with two, they covered their feet and with two. They were flying, beloved flying and they were calling to one another holy 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 is the lord i know you know the chapter you know the verse the whole earth is full of his glory had the sound of their voices the door post and the threshold shook and the temple was filled with 
And Isaiah, at that point, declared, Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Beloved, in our times of trouble, we need God to manifest himself and give us the needed wisdom, strength, encouragement, and provision. We need to stop running away and run towards him. It is when we run towards him that we see God for who he is. It's God Almighty, the one who should be praised and lifted up. And when we praise and lift up his name and lift up the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and move towards him, he manifests his power, his anointing, his wisdom, and it brings to work on our behalf, beloved. And we know that we know what we should be doing, waiting on God, or moving towards his strength and power. And so the prophet reminds the people of God that our God does not fail, that God will come and take care of his people. Our God is the greater, is the creator of the universe. There is no one else like our God. Among all the God, the sun writer says, who is like unto him? Our God has no threat that keeps him up at night. No, that should make you and I want to get your praise on this morning and on your afternoons and on your evenings, on night evening sessions when you are going to sleep. He has never stopped watching over his people. And that is why the sound writer, I quite remember, sang, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And they wanted to say how our God is an everlasting God. And that strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. I like the songwriter. We will wait upon the Lord, beloved. We will wait upon the Lord. Why? Because our God's reign forever. That is our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, he declared. The everlasting God. You do not faint. You won't grow weary. Because he's your defender and he's the defender of the weak. He comforts those in need. He lifts us up on wings like eagles. My dear brother, my dear sister, there are some lessons we can learn about our God and how our God wants to minister to his people. I mean, you and I, we see, I mean, in Isaiah chapter 40, Verse 28 all the way to 31, the illustration of an eagle majestically flying and not growing tired. And that even the younger grew weary and need the strength of the Lord. He's the everlasting God. He's not a God we have created to be what we want him to be. He is the God that created us and knows what you and I need. And has provided all that is needed for us to live a powerful and meaningful life with his guidance and help. Look through scriptures from Genesis to Revelation in the Bible. He's an everlasting God. When I look at the psalmist David, how he declares it, bless the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. I think he's someone on that, someone who says 48. Only the Lord is everlasting to everlasting. Paul in 1 Timothy 1.17 says, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. And even John, the gospel writer declared, I saw another angel flying through the heaven, carrying the everlasting good news to preach to the people who belong to this world, to every tribe, language, and people in the book of Revelation. My dear brother, my dear sister, only an everlasting God can bring everlasting good news. There is but one God, one everlasting God, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. No one else can lay claim to his property. And that property is eternity. The gods of the heathen cannot lay claim to it. 
But for those who choose to follow Jesus, a glorious eternity awaits. And the Bible says, and God will open wide the gates of heaven for you and I to enter into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Second Peter, I think chapter 1, verse 11, following. Beloved, remember Isaiah declared in Isaiah 55, 8 to 9, he said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Beloved, what kind of God will he be? What kind of God will God be if you and I could wrap our minds around him and his ways? What kind of God will he be if you and I could predict where he will go and how he will get there? What kind of God will he be if you and I, or if he worked out of the same small and limited view of the world and history that you and I do? He'll be small, yes, I believe. And I know you agree with me. He'll be like us. We could not depend on him to meet our needs and be our strength. He'll be called into question. And it will be right to doubt him. But it's more of those things. God does not need a Nazarene nap to get through the day. As Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 1, 27, 29. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things. And the things that are nothing to nullify the things that are. So that no one may boast before him. Beloved, God chooses to use us, you and I. Have you asked the question, why? Have you asked the question, why? God chooses to use you and I because he wants to. He wants to. God can do anything. He wants when he wants because he's God and we are not. The only thing that he will not do is go against his word. Even that is by his choice. So no one can stand before him and boast or think that they are better than they should. God works by his own rules. He does not have to explain himself. But I'm glad at times he does. Those who hope in the Lord are strengthened. When you and I begin to see God for who he is, we put our hope in him and not in our own abilities and talent. But those who wait upon the Lord, expect. But those who wait upon the Lord, look. But those who wait upon the Lord, hope in the Lord, will be strengthened in the Lord. They will rise up and soar like an eagle. I'm so glad. Thomas Jefferson didn't win that a turkey is our national bear. Too many people living like turkeys. I want to soar like an eagle. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Anyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, including you and I. Will not be disgraced, will not be disappointed, will not be ashamed. We will rise above our circumstances. They will soar and wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Beloved, true success really happens overnight. I've seen eagles nest with the babies in it, not quite ready to take flight and dependent on their parents for their basic needs. The babies that have recently left the nest and don't yet have the beautiful white head and tail, they really don't stand out much from any other bed of prey. We see business owner 
whose business seems to run itself. We see an eight athlete, like in recent time, in the Olympic Games in Paris, who breaks records running a marathon and doesn't seem to break a sweat. We see people whose marriages look like they're still on their honeymoon. They are still on their honeymoon. We compare ourselves to them and think that they must have some special gift we don't. What we often don't see in these cases is what these people have to buy the price and work hard to accomplish what we are seeing now. The reason that so many people don't stick to a new venture is that they lack that determination and focus that the eagle has when he first takes up. They assume it was going to be easy. It takes a lot of trust to get that big bird in the air and a lot of obstacles to overcome. We just see them soaring and assume it is easy. They rise above their circumstances. They go through the tough so they can enjoy the easy. Remember these things as you go through some tough times. He's the everlasting God. His ways are higher than your ways. Beloved, our hope has to be in the Lord. Rise above your circumstances, knowing that the Lord is with you. Thank you. And may God reach and bless you. Have a wonderful and a good day. And celebrate the living God, the everlasting God. Amen and amen. Bye for now.